Hey guys, how's it going? I wanted to share with you my third trimester checklist. If this is your first time down Anderson Lane, please like and subscribe down below and leave us a comment so we know who you are. Alright, let's dive in. So here are my top 10 things on my checklist to get ready in your third trimester. So my first thing has to do with this room that we are in. If you guys didn't know, I have been filming in the nursery almost this entire pregnancy. So I will show you guys a little bit of the nursery right now. So this is something that you want to have ready. I have diapers, wipes, jammies, onesies ready in here. I've got the bed ready. Right now it has the diaper bag and my hospital bag in it. A few decorations, extra diapers. Everything is ready and organized to go. So that is my first thing because I promise you, you are not going to want to do it later after the baby gets here. So get it done beforehand. Number two, is getting your baby clothes, blankets, sheets, all of that stuff washed before the baby gets here. You're gonna have lots of people that are gonna give you new stuff, and even after the baby gets here, there's gonna be people that give you new stuff, but you're gonna want to have the stuff that you already have nice and clean and ready to go on baby. And if you clean it with Drift, it smells like baby. So that's a little added bonus. Okay, number three has to do with this your car seat. You need to know how to install or install your car seat in the car previous to baby getting here. And you need to make sure that your significant other knows how to do it as well. So make sure you know how to install it. If you've never installed one or you have questions about it, you can go to your local fire department, police department, and ask them to show you how to install it in your car. Number four, it's your hospital bag. Make sure to pack your hospital bag and have it ready. I suggest three to four weeks, maybe even more, ahead of time, depending on how your pregnancy is doing. Um, I did mine a few, what, like three weeks ago. I will link that up in the description up here so you guys can click on that and see what I put in my hospital bag. But get your hospital bag ready and in a place where you know you can get it or grab it. I'm probably actually gonna be putting this in the car this week so it is ready. There are a few loose things that I need to grab, especially because I only have two pairs of pants that I can wear right now and one of those needs to go in this for when I come home. Those will be grabbed on the way out. But get this ready, get it in your car in those last couple weeks before the baby's due. Okay, on to number five. Number five has to do with your insurance. I suggest that you guys call your insurance ahead of time. You should have called them sometime in the beginning of your pregnancy um, to talk to them. Lots of insurances have incentive programs for pregnant women. So check with your um, insurance provider as you get pregnant, number one. And then as you are getting ready to deliver, I just like to call them and make sure that the hospital that I'm delivering at is in service, that they know that I'm planning on being there. I know my induction date, so I told them exactly when I was going to be there. They looked at my OBG, they looked up everything and made sure it was okay, and they also told me my window to add the baby to our insurance. So it's a lot of help. Most of the insurances are great to work with. They want to make sure that you're taken care of and then also enter into their incentive programs. My insurance has an incentive program that if you lose your baby weight within a year, they give you a $50 bonus. So it's worth it, right? Number six, pre-register for your hospital. It is so much nicer to have everything done when you're already on high alert when you have to go into the hospital to not have to sit and go through paperwork when you are ready to have that baby. So pre-register at your hospital. Most hospitals have a page. You can go on to it and pre-register through that or you can call your hospital and ask them what you need to do to pre-register. Some of them do it over the phone. Now on to number seven. Once you've pre-registered for your hospital say or even while you're doing this, I suggest that you take a hospital tour. If you've never delivered at a specific hospital 
then sometimes it may take the ease off of you and your mind to go and take a hospital tour so you know exactly where you need to go when you get there you know what the facility has to offer you know where the ice machine is you know where the bathrooms are for your significant other and family and you can tour the rooms that you're going to be staying in and to be familiar with the hospital where you're going to deliver at. So I totally suggest taking a hospital tour. Um, just call up or look on your hospital's webpage. Most of them will schedule you or you can call ahead of time and they will be there to show you the hospital that you're going to deliver at. This goes with part of that as well. You need to discuss and write out a birth plan. Now, I didn't have a birth plan for my first, I didn't even know what a birth plan was for my first. My doctor never talked to me about it. Um, they will talk to you usually about whether you want certain things or not, but it's nice to go through and have like a checklist to look at. Um, Babycenter.com has a checklist that you can go through for a birth plan. My hospital actually has a printout of a birth plan where you can go through and check the things that you want, which is nice if they do because you know exactly what they offer then. Some hospitals don't offer you a place where you have the option to get in a tub or a shower when you're in labor and delivery, but some of them do. So if you can get on your own hospital's one or during that tour, you can ask them if they have birth plan uh, available to you to fill out. But you need to talk about, about this with your doctor and with your significant other, and especially you need to go through the options that you have so you know what you want. These things go through things like during your labor, if you want to be able to move around, if you want an epidural, if you'd like to labor in a bath, if you want who you want in the room, who you want to be able to come and see you after the baby comes, how long they should be able to stay. All of these things are in your birth plan. It doesn't mean that your birth will go exactly as your birth plan suggests or how you want it to go, but at least maps out so that the people that are taking care of you know what your wishes are. On to the last two things that we have on our list. Meal prep is my number eight. I am not great at meal prep. I do not like making extra at dinner time because I'm already tired by dinner time cooking, but I promise you it really isn't that hard. I've done it for the last like couple weeks for the meals that we've made. We have spaghetti and spaghetti noodles in the freezer. We have leftover chicken fried steak fingers that I made. I just made a ton of them and put some in baggies and froze them. We have some chicken just in marinade that's in there that they can throw in the crock pot with some rice so it doesn't have to be hard just takes a little bit of time to add a few extra things to your freezer so that you can have some good nutritious food coming into your house after that baby gets there and with this if you have kids um i first of all i suggest you look at the video for my lunch hacks which i'll put right up here um we have a system where i make up stuff for the next two weeks in advance anyway and then it takes my kids literally like 60 seconds to make their lunches for school while you're in this postpartum thing and having the baby you want to try and make your kids life as close to normal as you can and so I suggest getting those lunches and that kind of stuff ready beforehand as well and finally you need to set up people for multiple situations to be able to take care of your kids your pets your house when you leave to go to the hospital I have three or four different situations that I'm prepared for because both of my kids are in school I have somebody that will take them if it's after school I have somebody that is set up to take them if we go in on induction day I have somebody to schedule to take them um, if we end up going up in the middle of the night so you need to know and have multiple ways of getting those things taken care of multiple people or multiple situations ready to go because you never know when baby is coming so that was my third trimester top 10 checklist I'm sure there are a thousand other things that you could check off in this third trimester, but these are the top 10 that I think are the most important. If you guys like this video, please click that like 
button and don't forget to subscribe and comment down below. I love to read your guys' comments. We'll see you again next time down Anderson Lane. Bye.